Hey everybody, welcome back to Honeycomb Manila. My name is Keo Kosha, and today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite pieces of equipment, something that I've been using since 2017 when it first came out. Now, I was, I was an early adopter for this machine, and this is of course the Baratza SETI 270. Uh, I think that this was the original Baratza SETI, and now they have one called the AP, that's the all-purpose burst. Uh, but this is the original one and it actually won the best of show at SCA 2017 I believe when it first came out and it's considered kind of a revolutionary design and you can see it right away this kind of seven shape and then the grinds go the coffee goes through the top and down out of this spout directly through the burrs and there's really no slides or shoots or anything like that where coffee can get retained so it has a very low grind retention and I fell in love with this machine almost immediately. I had some issues in the start, but I was able to resolve them over time. And I'd like to talk a bit why and then kind of address some of the concerns that people have. Uh, because until now, people still say that this grinder is too fine for pour overs and too coarse for, uh, for espresso. Now, I do think that it is too coarse for espresso but we'll address that in a minute uh, as for too fine for pour overs i i gotta say that i disagree with that completely and the reason why i think people have come to that conclusion is because of the kind of grounds or the quality of grounds that you get out of this grinder now i'm a bit of a conical burr aficionado like uh, of course hand grinders are all conical burrs or most of them are conical burrs uh, and then we have our compact E10 over there, which is one of my favorite espresso grinders. It's also a conical burr. And then this guy, I've worked with a lot of the other Barazzas as well, the Encore, the Preciso over the years. And I find that conical burrs just have more tasty, tangy flavors coming out of them. So if you have like similar grinders, especially with a compact line, you can get pretty much the same grinder with just a different burr set, uh, then you, you actually can taste the difference between those two grinders side by side. And what I found is that uh, kind of the particle distribution that you get out of burr grinders uh, is kind of like a reverse curve. So you have a lot of, of fine particles and a lot of boulders, but kind of nothing in the middle. Right, so you have 50-50 of those, and kind of that very, very equal distribution creates this tangy uh, play in, in the flavors in your mouth and in the extraction. So I actually took my Barazza Seti, this very unit, uh, to, the, to the Brewer's Cup, and uh, we did really well. In fact, this is the grinder that I originally used for immercalation. In fact, if I remember correctly, I didn't have it with me. I had sent it back to El Capitan for some for some maintenance. And uh, this, of course, is distributed in the Philippines by El Capitan. And I sent it back to them. And during the meantime, I was using another Barazza grinder, the Preciso, I think, uh, to, to practice for the Barista Championships. But the grind quality was still too coarse on that grinder and could not go as fine as this guy could. Now, for most of the Barazza grinders, it kind of uses a step setting where you turn the, the, the hopper and it adjusts the, the coarseness or sometimes on, I think, the, like the Forte, the Forte um, they have a fancy one, I forget the name, but there are like some sliders over here where you can adjust the grind setting. On this one, the burr itself actually spins and goes up and down inside of the mechanism. And it's a cross between a step grinder, meaning that there are fixed settings. And when you turn this thing, it clicks and it goes one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 31. But inside of each of those settings, there's this free floating adjuster that goes from A to I, which is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, nine different settings before you go to the next step. So you can make it finer or coarser inside of those steps. And I found that for uh, when I was developing Mercolation, I needed that kind of control in my 
in my grinds. So that meant that this was perfect. Uh, as for it not being uh, coarse enough for pour overs, I disagree with that. What I think people are struggling with is that it does give you a generous amount of fines uh, versus other grinders, which kind of have the have the particle distribution kind of center heavy or very even. And I like that contrast uh, in terms of the, the grind, the particle distribution and profile. So when you're adjusting for that, you just need to know that that's what you're getting out of the grinder when you're doing your pour over. Because I've used this for Chemex, I've used it, which uses a very fine, a very coarse grind. I've used it for Kalita 102. And I found that in its, not even its coarsest settings. So like sometimes its coarsest settings are already too coarse. Uh, and maybe you just want to go into like 29, 28, and it's great for those. However, the criticism that it is too coarse for espresso is accurate. And that's why we're making this video today, because I want to install these shims. So this is what's called by Baratza, you can see it on their website. This is called a espresso shim for the SETI. And supposedly you can pop this into there and it's going to lift up the burr just that little bit, you know, it's like nanometers. And supposedly just that little adjustment will be enough to make this grinder completely usable for espresso. Uh, and since we don't really use the, the, the coarser grinds sizes on this, it's perfect. So that's a sacrifice is that you're going to shift the entire, uh, the entire grind range up or finer. So let's dive right into it, and then as I disassemble this guy, I'll explain some of, some of its other features as we go along. Oh, before I, before I uh, unplug it so that we can do the maintenance work or we can do the upgrade, I just want you guys to see that it has this digital readout. You can have different times. You can set different times and then press play, and it grinds, and press stop, and it stops grinding. I usually recommend that this grinder will only be used for maybe six to 10 second bursts, and that's enough to get through one espresso grind uh, run or about 12 grams. It might change when you put the shim in, but after that, let the grinder rest for another minute uh, just to allow it to cool down. And this is important to know for all home grinders. It's not just this grinder, but all home grinders generally use uh, plastic, drive systems or gear systems. And if you were to have metal gear systems, I would already make it kind of an industrial level grinder, not really for home, and that would drastically drive up the price. So as a trade-off, there is a plastic gear set inside to bring the price to a more affordable consumer level range. But we just need to be careful when we use it that we don't overuse the machine and just be grinding like entire hoppers full of beans all the time. So let it rest. All right, so I'm gonna take off the hopper. And one of the interesting features of this grinder is that it knows when the hopper's not there. If I try to start it, it's not gonna work, right? It knows that there's no hopper, and so there's no danger of this thing running with my finger in there. Safety first. Uh, and on that note, we will unplug the grinder. Very important when doing any maintenance work on an electric device or anything in your cafe is know whether or not it should be plugged in. All right, so I'm gonna take out this little uh, rubber grinds catcher, put it over to the side. And then uh, now that we have this top view, let's talk a bit about this because you can see the burrs in there, hopefully on this, on this camera. And the big difference between the, the SETI, the Baratza SETI, and the other uh, grinders made by Baratza is that with most grinders, the center burr is a thing that spins and that pulls in coffee through the grinder. And it's the same on, on hand grinders like the Comandante, we have the Chestnut C2 here today. They all work the same way. This one does the opposite and it's the outside burr that spins instead. So there's a drive system that spins that outside burr and the result is that there's more surface area pulling the coffee through the grinder. That's giving you a faster grind speed 
just that little change of which section is doing the, the motion changes the grind profile drastically. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, if we look here from the, from the front cam, you can see that I'm gonna just rotate that burr all the way around, and it's going to just drop out very naturally. And let's put this guy over to the side. All right, so this is the center burr inside the Bratza 270. Uh, SETI 270 and you can see right away that there are the steps here are the teeth that give us the steps in the grinder and then this section is a free floating part that allows for the stepless system to give us those micro adjustments inside each of the steps and that's a center burr after several years it's still very very sharp and when I flip it over you can see the nut over there is what holds it in place and uh, the kit for the shim actually comes with the Allen wrench. So I'm gonna pop that in there and unscrew the burr and take it out. Now I got all of this from El Capitan. They are the official distributor here in the Philippines. So if you would like to do something like this, you can reach out to them and they can hook you up and help you get the parts that you need. Now I did, I have seen this done before on a YouTube video from Baratza, so if you go to Baratza's website, they do show you how to do this, but they only really show you how to do the disassembly, uh, and then they don't really put the shims inside. So I thought, okay, what better reason to do this versus that? So I've just unscrewed it, and when I feel that there's no more resistance, I can flip it over, and the burr actually just comes right off. And then if I wanted to pop this out, I could push it through and the whole thing would come out, but I'm not gonna do that now. So there's a little bit of coffee that got stuck underneath the burr and I'm just gonna brush that out. All right, now you can see that the burr has these two holes that slot into these two notches that are also there on that center holder and that matches up perfectly with the shim. So I'm just gonna pop that in there. And just that little bit of adjustment is going to give us supposedly enough uh, change to shift the grind distribution from not espresso worthy to espresso worthy. So I just popped it in and then I'm gonna put this back on top and screw the whole thing back. And it's that simple supposedly. Uh, again, the Baratza YouTube or the Baratza website did not complete the process in doing this, so I'm not 100% sure if this will work. I've never seen it done, but it seems straightforward enough that, you know, it, it really should work. All right, now make sure that there's no allowance between the burr, it should be snug up against that shim. And we are done with the Allen wrench, and I'm gonna pop this whole thing back in. So when you're putting it back in, there's a blue line here and a blue arrow there. You just line the two up and rotate it. Just let go of it to see if it falls. It's not falling. And there we go. And we gotta put on the hopper, if you remember earlier. Put on the hopper and hopefully this will turn on. I'm gonna plug it back in. And it's gonna go through its boot up sequence. Once it's booted up, it's spinning and it's not making any noise, indicating that the birds are hitting each other. I'm very excited. It sounds like it completely worked. Let's try it out. Okay, so we've installed our shim into the Baratza SETI 270. You press a button and it is running. And I'm gonna load in 18 grams of coffee into the hopper. I'll put that over there. And then I'm going to grind directly into my Pour the filter. So if you remember earlier, I was saying that I really like the structure of the coffee as it comes out into the porta filter, and you're gonna see in a moment why. So I'm gonna tear my scale with the porta filter on top, and we are gonna grind our coffee. So I have it set here to 1A, which is the finest setting, but I'm actually gonna start over at five because apparently when you insert the shim 
it accounts for five steps. So I'm going to start at five, or it, start, it accounts for six steps. So I'm going to start over here at, at five, so it's the next step after one. So that, that took about seven seconds to grind all 18 grams. And, yep. So look how nice the ground distribution is on that porta filter. Straight out the grinder, didn't need a distribution tool. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tap this straight down. Looks good. All right, so go over here to the espresso machine. Pretty good. All right. So forty four out in thirty one seconds. There's crema. You can see right away there's crema, and that, my friends. Espresso. Very nice. So, yeah, it tastes great. It tastes great. And this is a bit of an older coffee. So, maybe with a newer coffee, uh, this with a fresher coffee, I should say, this should be just the right amount of adjustment with just the one shim. All right, so that's the Baratza 270. Uh, Seti 270, again, one of my favorite grinders, one of my old faithfuls. This one is three years old, I think now, because uh, the Brewer's Cup was in 2018, maybe about two and a half years old. And it has served us well. If you're interested in this, you can get it over at El Capitan here in the Philippines or find the, the official distributors on www. I think it's baratza.com or baratza. Yep, baratza.com. All right, my name is Keo. If you have any questions about the SETI, maybe we can do a kind of a distribution uh, sample and show you guys like the different, um, the different uh, coarseness and fineness of the settings here on the SETI, maybe a before and after. Honestly, it's really easy to put that shim in and take it out. It takes all of three minutes as you saw. So if you guys want to see anything like that, do let me know in the comments below. My name is Keo. Please do follow Honeycomb Manila on Instagram and subscribe on our YouTube page. We are doing a giveaway for our Drip t-shirt. If you do want to join that giveaway, we are doing giveaways every 100 subscribers until we get to 1,000 subscribers. Follow at Keo Kosha and at Honeycomb Manila on Instagram and then comment below with whatever you want to comment but make sure that you include your t-shirt size and your Instagram handle so that we can send you a DM and we will check that you are following those accounts and subscribe to our page. Finally, we're also part of a coffee community on Facebook called I Love Coffee and we post a lot of our content there and it's a great place to see other people inside Manila and even the world uh, talking about their favorite things with coffee and asking questions and helping each other out. So join us there as well. That's facebook.com slash group slash yes i love coffee uh, and that doesn't belong to us that belongs to the community we just want to encourage uh, that kind of dialogue especially in these times where we're kind of a bit isolated uh, as i'm sure you guys know all right i wish you good luck i wish you good health i wish you great coffee peace